The following opinions are solely those of Botest.com and its test captain. Hi, I'm Steve for Botest.com, and today we're going to conduct a test and performance evaluation on the new 580 Flybridge from Schaefer Yachts, Brazil's largest yacht manufacturer. This vessel was designed for entertaining and making long cruises with friends and family. Let's see how well Schaefer's new 58-footer performs as we inspect her operational areas, starting at her most intriguing area, the lower helm. The Schaefer 580 is the first recreational boat ever put into production without a wheel at the lower helm. All that we find there is a remarkably automated captain's chair. Of course, future owners wanting a traditional wheel could always request one. The throttle and shift controls are on the left arm of the helm chair. Also on the left arm are the trim tab controls. On the right arm is the joystick, which can be used at all speeds. The right armrest also has a remote control for the nav screen, so underway the captain can remain seated. The helm panel in front of me is uncluttered, with two 20-inch nav displays behind a single sheet of plexi. Next versions of this model get a visor to reduce glare. These lower screens are slaves to the flybridge display, so in effect, they aren't controllable. We have a control on the right of the helm seat, and this controls the flybridge displays repeated here. Optionally, owners can choose both helm displays to remain independent. The entire dash is covered in a gray, genuine leather, something we rarely see in this class. On the right of the dash panel by my knee is the Volvo Penta display and a few push buttons and rocker switches. Next to these is a fire system control monitor for the engine room. There's a plexi drink holder on the right side of the chair with the Seakeeper gyro control just ahead. The left side of the dash has a Raymarine VHF radio. There's a footrest under the dash, but I'd like to see one a little higher. Under the hinged cover of the footrest is storage with space for a portable fire extinguisher. There are switches on the side of the chair to activate it, and the trim tabs are on the top of the armrest. There's an opening window on the right side of the helm chair. It's a half round, fitted into the fixed window, and opens by rotating the handle. The windshield for the lower helm has two 51 by 60 glass panels and a 5 inch wide mullion running up the middle. Vertical height visibility is excellent. The passenger side of the helm has a large flat leather covered dash with AC vents, and Schaefer has thoughtfully installed defogger vents in front of the helm. Pantograph wipers are parked vertically near this center frame. Before we get underway, let me demonstrate a few things about the IPS joystick system. Most people know that the props are on the front of the IPS pods and are pulling rather than pushing, a theoretical advantage because they're operating in undisturbed water. The pods are controlled by the joystick and they act independent of each other to provide directional thrust for maneuverability around the dock. No bow or stern thrusters needed. When in maneuvering mode, the joystick controls both thrust and direction which allows us to do things like crab sideways for docking. But by pushing a button on the base of the joystick, we go into running mode. Now the throttles control the speed and the joystick controls turning. When steering in running mode by joystick, a tap of the joystick adjusts course one degree, a twist of the joystick adjusts course five degrees. So from this lower helm, I'll walk the boat away from the pier and later I'll switch into running mode. The Schaefer 580 Flybridge has a length overall of 58 feet 1 inch, a beam of 16 feet 3 inches, and a draft of 4 feet 10 inches. With an empty weight of 55,710 pounds, full fuel and 3 people on board, we had an estimated test weight of 59,757 pounds. With the twin 625 horsepower Volvo Penta IPS 800s powering our test boat, we reached the top speed of 30 knots at 2460 RPM in light chop with about 15 miles per hour of winds. When we backed off to 2,000 RPM and 21.8 knots, we found our best fuel economy with a burn rate of 41.5 gallons per hour and a range of 262.2 nautical miles, all while still holding back a 10% reserve of the boat's 555 gallon total fuel capacity. Our time to plane from a dead stop was 9 seconds and we reached 20 miles per hour in 11.2 seconds. Usually, the IPS system restricts turning, making for a large turning radius but the joystick steering overrides that. I can still turn gently or I can turn hard. The boat rolls 26 degrees during the hard turns at speed. When we did a 180 on the lower helm joystick, it took 18 seconds, but when I used the flybridge wheel to steer, the built-in restriction of the turn radius meant it took us 29 seconds to make that same 180 at the same speed. So traditional steering has the traditional restrictions. The 580 Fly does have a slight 5 degree bow rise at speed, which is characteristic of these types of boats and it did not impede visibility. The boat does have trim tabs to help level the ride. The hull of the Schaefer 580 handled well, slicing through the wake of the camera boat with very little movement. 
The Flybridge home console is located on the starboard side of the boat under a hardtop with 6 feet 6 inches of overhead clearance. The helm has both a wrapped adjustable tool wheel and a joystick for maneuvering. Just like the joystick below, this one, with the touch of a button, can also be used for joystick steering at speed. Two Raymarine 12-inch screens are on the angled dash, with a magnetic compass centered in line with the wheel just above. The flat of the dash has a small open cubby and a plexi drink holder below the Raymarine screens. A 7-inch Volvo engine display is to the left of the wheel, along with remote windlass control for the anchor. The throttles, trim tab controls, engine start-stop buttons, and joystick are to the right of the wheel. Below the joystick is a VHF radio. A padded helm chair has a bolster for those preferring to stand, and it has some storage in the base under the seat. A smoked Lexan wind deflector wraps around the forward end of the flybridge. Coming back after our test, we needed to have a port side tie-up, so with the flybridge helm to starboard, I moved below for a better view. Below, there's an optional third steering station, which is ideal when backing into a slip or docking to starboard, but not to port. So I moved to the lower helm station and found the best visibility for docking. Using the joystick and its normal thrust and steering, we come up right against the dock, slow and easy, even with the crosswind. Three 11 inch steps from each side of the aft deck lead to the 20 inch wide side decks on each side of the cabin house. Railings on the cabin provide handholds where the 21 inch side railings come into play. The outer rail opens just by the steps to facilitate boarding from a pier and the rail gets higher near the pulpit where it measures 31 inches off the deck. An additional rail at the base of the side deck stairs would be a welcome addition. A 55 pound anchor and 196 feet of chain stand ready at the bow roller. A chain passes through a chain stopper, which is flanked by stainless bollards, to the windlass. Foot switches for the windlass are to the starboard side, and there are storage lockers in the deck to either side of the ground tackle. Both helm stations also have remote windlass controls. 10-inch bollards are mounted on the stern quarters with fair leaves through the transom for dock lines. Battery switches are easily at hand in the port superstructure. Release the catch on the third stair to the flybridge to reveal access to the crew quarters. The hatch to the engine room is in the middle of the cockpit. I found it best to grab the handrail for the flying bridge stairs while lowering myself onto the vertical ladder at the hatch. The engine room can also be accessed through a door in the crew quarters. There's 4 feet 7 inches of headroom in the engine space by the deck hatch, rising to 5 feet 4 inches aft by the transom. The two engines are spaced 2 feet 4 inches apart. The forward bulkhead in the engine room has a 13.5 kW Onan generator next to a power panel a battery charger, and a Fireboy suppression system. A Seakeeper 9 gyro stabilizer is mounted between the forward bulkhead and the base of the ladder to the hatch. There are twin Volvo Penta D6 diesels rated at 625 horsepower each. Halfway between the engines is a step down, which increases overhead clearance as we moved aft, but also provides a space at the step for two sea strainers. Looking aft in the engine room, we see the pumps for the hydraulic swim platform, a Raycor fuel filter for each engine, the exhaust feeding into the port pod drive, and a saddle mounted fuel tank. Forward there's room to get outboard of the engines as service points for both engines are on the left side of each engine. Larger engine options are available and Schaefer will install straight shafts, V drives, and even surface piercing drives. The 580 Fly has a 6 foot long teak deck hydraulic swim platform spanning the 16 feet 3 inches of the boat. If the platform is up, a built in 4 step boarding ladder helps you to reboard. The hydraulic lift capacity of 1,600 pounds for a tender is almost twice what we normally see. There's a built-in articulating ladder that automatically adjusts to the height, making the transition from the platform through the stern gate easy. Hardware is embedded in the platform to mount cradles for PWCs. We should add that the 580 Sports hull, deck, superstructure, and flybridge are all built with vacuum resin infusion process. The Schaefer 580 is a strongly built boat that handles well and is fun to drive with the joystick alone. I'm glad the flybridge had a wheel so we could contrast the difference between the two control stations. Be sure to look for our features video and comprehensive captain's report, but for now, that's my performance evaluation of the Schaefer 580 flybridge. For BoatTest.com, I'm Captain Steve. We'll see you on the water.